Hey everybody and welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 58. In this tutorial we are going to take a look at light attenuation. So if we pull up what we had from our last tutorial, you will see that, let's turn off all the ambient light. So what we're getting is currently just the light from our point light. And you see how much the uh, model is being lit when the light is at this distance? Well, when we move back, it's like the model is being lit exactly the same. The light strength should lessen on this object as the light gets further away, and that is what we are going to be implementing today. Let's go over to the drawing program and take a look at the light attenuation equation. When we calculate the intensity, we're going to multiply it by this uh, attenuation factor. And the equation goes like this. We will have one, over, and we will have A plus B plus C. And B will be multiplied by X, and C will be multiplied by X squared. Now, let's go into what each of these are. X is going to be the distance for uh, the light to that pixel. A is just a constant factor that we need because if we don't have A, then we risk dividing by zero, which as you know, you cannot do. So we have to have some value of A that's, not, that's greater than zero to prevent that from happening. B is going to be our linear factor. So if we only had a and B, let's say we, we had zero for C, so we're ignoring the X squared component. If we only had A and B, then as the light moves away, it would linearly decrease in how effective it was. And we'll take a look at that when we implement this. And then C, of course, is the exponential factor for how much it will decrease. So what we need to do is we need to add um, three new floats to our light for the light attenuation values for A, B, and C. And then we need to add that to our constant buffer and update it in the pixel shader. And then we need to multiply our attenuation factor by our diffuse light's intensity. Let's go back into our project. And in the light header, we are going to add three floats. Attenuation A, so we'll just default that to 1. Attenuation B, which we'll default to, uh, let's say, 0 0.1. And attenuation C, 0 0.1. Now let's go into the constant buffer types and add these. So since these will all be 4 bytes each, um, we're not really going to have to worry about the 16 byte alignment chunks here. So I'll just put these in. Dynamic light attenuation A, B, and C. Now let's add this in the pixel shader. All right, so next let's go down to where we are calculating the intensity. We are going to multiply the intensity by the attenuation factor, so we have to calculate the attenuation factor. In order to calculate the attenuation factor, we need to know the distance, because if we go back to our equation, x was distance. We can call the distance function, and we can pass in dynamic light position for one argument, and the world position for this pixel in another argument. I'll just change that to be distance to light. Since we have a function called distance, I don't want to name it the same thing. Now let's calculate the attenuation factor. So we're going to take one, we're going to divide by the attenuation factor A plus the attenuation factor B times the distance to light. So this is our A in the equation. This is our B times X. And now we need to add in the CX squared. So we'll put in the attenuation C, which is the C, and we need to get X squared. So we're just going to call PAL. 
we are going to pass in the distance to light for the first argument, and then two for the second so that we're squaring it. So now that we have the attenuation factor, we can multiply the diffuse light's intensity by the attenuation factor. And the last thing we have to do here is inside of our graphic CPP, we need to just make sure that we are updating this constant buffer with the new data. And I believe we should be good to go. So let's see what we get with this. All right, so if we go up here, let's turn off the ambient light completely. And you see as we get further, the object gets darker, and as we get closer, it gets brighter. Now, you'll want to mess around with the A, B, and C values and figure out what exactly you'd want. Let's go ahead and add some sliders so that we can modify the light's color, strength, and the attenuation values. Now for the dynamic light, for the attenuation A factor, don't forget that it can never be zero. So I'm just going to make the minimum be 0 0.1 in our slider. And before we mess with these, I'm just going to increase the resolution on our window. So we have a little bit more space to see everything. So first I'm going to take out the ambient light and we can, I can barely see the object. I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up in the video. So what we can do is, you know, you can mess with all these sliders and I know that the exponential fact, the exponential value is the biggest thing right here because I mean, it's exponential. The further you get, you know, it's going to be like an uh, upside down J pretty much. So if we take out the exponential factor, then now we're just looking at the linear difference. So as we get closer, see there it is. And when we get further and further, it's fading, but not as much, you know, as you might expect. If we wanted it to be like how we had before, we could also, you know, take out the linear factor. What you'll want to do is mess with these and try to find a value that works for you. Because it all depends, you know, on many things like, first off, how intense do you want the light when it gets close? How far do you really want the light to travel? And, you know, other things, of course. And you can see that since we're not saturating the value, if I turn up the light's intensity to be super high, uh, we get strange results like that. Yeah, that is light attenuation. So I encourage you to, you know, implement that, play with it a bit, and see what works for you. That is all that we are going to cover in this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we are probably going to look at implementing multiple dynamic point lights and the issues that we will encounter with performance when we have many lights with our current setup.